He's like, like, I know what you're doing. You want to join you? <laughs> What's that? He's like, I know what you're doing. It's time to join you. I know. <laughs> he gets on most of a lot of these at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Cool. He's like, I know what you're doing. Yeah. All right, it says we're live. So let's try this. Let's do this on YouTube too. So that's good. That'll be uh, it'll be the same thing as Facebook Live. So okay, guys. Well, I uh, appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, I'm gonna show you something uh, that's pretty interesting. Not just you know retail arbitrage. Uh, that's just kind of our jumping off point here. But uh, obviously, I you know taught a lot of people how to sell on Amazon and. It's just a good beginning part. Um, there's a lot more to Amazon, as you know, but I'm a, definitely a firm believer in uh, having a diverse business, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the e-commerce world where it's increasingly competitive. Um, so it's uh, it's important to um, you know be diverse, and so that's a lot. Just when we talk about arbitrage, you know, that's just kind of a stepping stone into a lot of great things. So, but uh, we'll get started here. So um, just a little quick overview, you know, a lot of people, you may be here for different reasons. Maybe you're just curious, see what, what I'm going to do. You've, maybe you've heard what I've said before. So you kind of know what I'm going to say anyway. Um, you know, a lot of you may ask yourself, uh, you know, what do I want from, and a lot of you probably have full-time jobs or maybe not. Some of you do this full-time. So you kind of have to ask yourself, uh, you know, what do you want out of this business? Uh, a lot of people start off not really having any sort of game plan or any sort of exit strategy, but you start any business, you should have uh, both of those. So, you know, and look, a lot of people start off the Amazon venture and they all kind of take the same route and do things the same way. I do everything pretty much completely the opposite <laughs> of most sellers. Uh, definitely take the road less traveled. Uh, I, the way I source, the way I, do everything, even wholesale, even private label is pretty much completely different than what a lot of people do. And uh, like I said, you know, what's your exit strategy? What's your game plan? How do you get to where you want to go? So if you don't have some sort of goal in mind, you don't really know what you're working towards. Um, you know, you're just going to keep doing Amazon until it just kind of fizzles out or you, do you want to build something of value and sell your business? Uh, that's, that's what I know. My game plan is so maybe that should uh something to think about there so here now a lot of you i know i've talked to thousands of amazon sellers i've coached thousands of amazon seller hundreds and um you know a lot of them are just tired of wasting time and money mm -hmm. time is a very precious commodity it's the only commodity you cannot get back you can't get more of it every second that ticks by is uh, a second gone you can't get that back um you know it's uh and it's important when you have families like ryan and i do and you look at your children and all that time that you would rather spend with them instead of working for that dollar the almighty dollar you know so uh, i'm all about working smart and doing things efficiently outsourcing as ryan knows that's something i preach big time i you know, I have at any given time, I have anywhere between eight, and sometimes 12 VAs working around the clock. So, and that keeps me out of the, uh, out of the day-to-day -day operations of my business. So I know a lot of you are tired of the race to the bottom. And I know a lot of you have lost hope. You think, oh my gosh, all I do is lose a bunch of money last Q4, uh, bought a bunch of stuff that was just terrible, you know, uh, <laughs> It's a common story. You're not alone. So don't worry. And a lot of you are trying to make to a goal. You do have a goal in mind, but you're trying to make it there. And it's, it seems uh, almost impossible at times. I know when I started off, as Ryan knows, I uh, my background a little bit, I started selling online 2001, did eBay. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've been in, I can relate to almost every seller out there. I've been near bankruptcy. I've had a lot of uh, medical crises in my life. Uh, both my daughters were born premature. One was born three months early. One was born a month early. Mm. 
Uh, so, you know, you talk about medical bills rack, racked up. Um, so we are in tens and uh, probably six figures in debt, not in debt anymore. Uh, but, uh, you know, we are near bankruptcy. Sometimes I didn't know how I was going to pay for my own gas in my car. So, you know, I've been where you've been. Uh, I've had the same troubles. And so it's, I found Amazon out of necessity. I was trying to find ways to save money, make money. And then I stumbled into it about four or five years ago, um, started dabbling in it. And then uh, I did really bad at it in the beginning. <laughs> I didn't know anything. <laughs> didn't have, didn't know what Amazon fees were. Didn't know anything about it. I figured it all out myself. And uh, I guess in a way that in hindsight, that was a good thing because it um, allowed me to not conform or fall into line with, with what everyone else was doing. I kind of just found my own way. So, um, so that's a little bit of what I'm going to share with you. Just a sneak peek about, uh, you know, the whole array of things I have to offer. So, no, and I spent time in the military, so I have a military background, spent time in Iraq. Um, you know, I've done a lot of stuff in my short 34 years. So <laughs> I've experienced far more than uh, some people experience in their lifetime <laughs> and uh, in the short time. So so I can feel for you. I'm on your team. I know what you've been through. So, you know, one thing I always had in mind when I first started off this, well, first off, my business started with kind of a bold prayer. And then it ended up, I had a real sense of purpose and a motivation because I really wanted to get my family to a better spot in life financially. Uh, it's not fun living your whole life skimming the treetops, as they say. Uh, and, you know, you're perpetually going to debt every month. You're not, you don't have enough money. Even after you cut out everything, uh, you're, you just don't have enough money to make ends meet. So that was kind of my motivation just to get us out of that and get to some higher ground uh, so, and have, have a safety net. You know, we never had that. So the way I got started, and a lot of you probably started, was arbitrage. You know, it's a great way to start. Uh, retail, I don't do much online arbitrage. I do teach it, and I think I teach it fairly well. I don't know, Ryan. You you may uh, no. You teach it. You teach it really well because your your method of doing RA is um, applicable to somebody that you know maybe right. you live outside the country and you can't do RA. Exactly. Uh, and so yeah, it's totally totally works for online arbitrage as well. Yeah. So you know, I typically always did retail arbitrage and online arbitrage. I the way I do it is really odd. I guess you could say a lot of people go what. Why do, you, why do you do it that way? And then, but, uh, you know, I can outsmart any of the tactical arbitrage or OA X-ray, you know, <laughs> I, I find all the stuff that they can't find, which is impossible for the, for them to find because, you know, they're, they're tied to title matches, UPC matches, and that's not how I operate. So arbitrage, if done correctly, is a, actually a very higher hourly wage job. I mean, the highest, Highest paying job I ever had was uh, uh, retail arbitrage. So, and it helps you learn Amazon, meaning that uh, you know what sells. I had a book where I wrote down things where I was like, wow, that's an interesting product. Um, and it looks like it sells really well. It's a real niche item. So I'd write that stuff down. And so when you get to private label, it really helps you jumpstart your private label sourcing or process, you know, of picking products. So. Arbitrage is a cash cow. It can be if it's done correctly. And I say that because it's easily automated or outsourced. There's no reason you should long-term spend your time doing it unless you love it like I do. And so I choose to do it. Um, and uh, that's also because I teach it. So I choose to do it um, because I love it and I like to teach it. So, But if you want to outsource it completely 100%, that's very doable. Um, so there's a lot of new sellers out there. So I just wanted to touch on that real quick. And I know you're gated in a lot of brands. Um, you know, if that's that's the case, my guess, guess is you're probably checking a lot of uh, a lot in the toys category, even the mm -hmm. kitchen. That's going to have a lot of brands that start off as being gated, but Amazon will allow you to sell those uh, if you just put some time in. You'll get uh, approval to sell those brands either automatically or 
you know, just a couple clicks of the button, they'll give you approval to do it. So there's a lot of categories where there are very few restrictions like industrial, scientific, Mm -hmm. automotive, grocery, kitchen, kitchen's huge category, health and household, as they call it now. I mean, huge category in books, of course. Um, There's all kinds of generic products. My whole business was built off in the beginning. Even my wholesale stuff was selling generic products that none of that is ever restricted. Right. So, and there's very little competition. Very, <laughs> very little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially in those categories, uh, especially these first two, sci- industrial, scientific, automotive, even yep. grocery still very, very few sellers still uh, after all this time. You know, um, there's some things you probably thought about that, uh, you know, that didn't work, have, haven't worked for you in the past. Um, you probably get overwhelmed. Uh, I'm just speaking from experience, talking to others one-on-one. They do feel very overwhelmed with retail arbitrage. And it, when I ask them, you know, what, what is your, what is your hourly wage? Cause I think that's important because retail arbitrage is a lot about your hourly wage. How much time do you spend in the store? How much time do you pack your products, manage your account? Uh, I had uh, one couple I helped and at the end of the year, they realized they were working for a little less than minimum wage after they factored in all the time they spent and uh, divide that into their profits. So now that could be a kind of scary, you know, so right. <laughs> you don't want to be working for uh, minimum wage, um, especially uh, the amount of hours you're having to work. It could be 60 hours uh, just trying to, trying to make a, you know, a decent income for hourly wage, you know, there's a lot less stressful jobs that you can do to make an hourly wage. So the way I do it, you can make a hundred dollars an hour or hundreds of dollars an hour a week. Uh, it just, de- just depends how you um, source. So, you know, it's already Q2. I just started. Um, Q4 is going to be here again before you know it. Mm-hmm. So you're probably thinking, now what? I mean, maybe your sales are kind of stunk this first Q4. I mean, this Q1. Uh, a lot of people, you kind of get stuck in the doldrums of Amazon. I mean, the summertime is the same way. Everyone's out having a good time and not as many people shopping online. So, you know, retailers, this is a tough time, but we're spoiled. We sell on Amazon where the sales are always really good. Um, it's not like we have a brick and mortar store in a small town. And uh, we just, re- you know, rely on foot traffic. Uh, we get hundreds of millions of eyeballs on our products, you know, every month. So, you know, there's lots of ways to thrive and just and and make make it work on Amazon. I really believe that everyone that's doing arbitrage online or retail, we're all kind of zeroed in on this. I wouldn't even say it's one percent of the total products on Amazon. It might be less than that. We're all kind of like stuck in these uh, small, narrow realm of products. Anything you find on clearance at Walmart or uh, Home Depot or something like that, we're all buying the same stuff. And that's why you see a glut of inventory to Amazon and the prices tank. So you need to find room. There's tens and hundreds of millions of products to sell on. We need to spread out a little bit. So the way you do that is is uh, based upon how you source. So um, if you source the way I do, you will find those places where I exist, which is, are the fringes of Amazon. I don't, you won't find me selling on the fingerlings or uh, the whatever the hottest product is. You know, I just, you won't find me there. You'll, you'll see me. I'm out of the limelight, the spotlight, you know, where everyone else is focused in on. Uh, I don't keep up with uh, a lot of those products it just doesn't really interest me if i do i usually will sell on love abella dolls i think was a big thing during q4 i was selling that in the summer before q4 when they were selling for 330 dollars and i quit selling them you know probably sometime around october so Mm -hmm. uh and focused and i was already on to the uh, next product that helps you stay ahead of trends and helps you exist on fringes where there are very very few sellers so some ge- suggestions is, like I said, to uh, write up a business plan, you know, make note of your best sellers as the year goes on, you know, rethink your sourcing strategies and, and think about outsourcing because long term, you need to quit being self-employed and be a business owner. Big mm-hmm. difference there. 
Um, yes. Own a system. You know, if you if any of you uh, know who Kiyosaki, the rich dad, poor dad, mm-hmm. um, he, he has a little graph and it talks about, you know, you have them people who are employed and you have people who are self-employed make up 95 percent of the population, but only earn 5% of the total income. Then you have people who are the investors and the people who are business owners who make up 5% of the population roughly and earn 95% of the wealth. So you really need to think about how do I transition from that 95% to that 5% of the population? And the way you do that is, is to build a system that works and then start outsourcing the pieces of it and that allows you to scale your business and grow it uh, and start. And once you start making, you know, more funds, revenue, you can choose what you want to do with it. You can invest it. Um, you know, my, my thing is just be uh, generous with your money. Uh, give it away. You know, um, all those things that you never imagined that you could do out of this business is very possible. Uh, you just have to take the road less traveled. Danny, that's awesome that you said that because um, so many sellers, they, they're they excited about the opportunity to quit their job. They come to a point in their business where they're able to do that. Um, and then they're doing this business, they're doing RA full time and they find out, man, I'm working harder and longer hours yeah. on this than I was in my regular job. Mm-hmm. In my regular job, I was able to stop at five o'clock and not have to think about it till nine o'clock the <laughs> next morning. I'm always having to think about this. Plus I might be making less You are working for yourself, but you essentially just created a job for yourself. You created a different job for yourself. Now, guys, that's awesome. If you can, you're able to quit your job. That's beautiful. And I Mm -hmm. totally, you know, that's a great thing to be able to do. Um, But what you want to make sure is that you're not stuck in that position forever where you're, you just created a different job for yourself. Um, It may not feel like a job at first because you don't have to go to work at a certain time. Uh, Mm -hmm. You don't have to necessarily have a boss that you have to report to. But Danny's exactly right. You 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 are kind of working for Amazon in a way. And yes. some of you are going to be totally happy doing that. And that's great. But some of you want to have a scalable business that you can essentially go on vacation and it still runs. Um, one that you can uh, you know, have the freedom to spend time with your family and not feel like you're in the hustle and bustle of always finding that next piece of inventory. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes retail arbitrage feels like that, where you're always looking for the next inventory. You're, you never really get a break because if you don't continue to send in inventory, um, your sales go down and you can't afford to have your sales go down because you need to eat. Um, and so all this comes down to what Danny teaches is that he makes retail arbitrage a long-term, sustainable, scalable business. Um, and that's, that's when it gets really fun because then your business is not totally dependent on you. You have people that can kind of run it for you and you can be thinking from the 30,000 foot view and not be so down in the details of packing and shipping and touching box tape and all that stuff. Nothing wrong with that guys. I, Danny and I have both all of that started. Um, but you want to get to a point to where you can hire that out and you can be thinking bigger about your business and, and you think about what's next and you have folks that are working for you that are doing some of that stuff that you used to do. So, um, you know, if you're not there right now, that's totally fine. You're going to get there. That's what this is all about. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, don't feel bad. I spent the first three years of Amazon just doing, I was self-employed. I did it all by myself for the most part. <clears throat> I just encourage you long-term, almost every business starts with person who started the business working in it day in day out but mm-hmm. you don't don't get trapped you know feel like um i mean most of you would probably like to be able to go on vacation sit yeah. on the beach and your business runs and it's not relying on your constant input to get a certain desired output yeah. and and you want some i always ask people would you would you uh if you had to hire yourself would you uh if uh, you had to rely on yourself every day, day in and day out to, uh, get up, get, get out there, find inventory and, and no, because your life happens. You have flat tires in life. Things upset you, um, where you have a big, big expenditure or you need a car repair, something derails you from working in it every day. So it's nice to know that you have support maybe through, uh, other employees or VA. So, 
it's nice, nice to have that. If you work for a corporation, then you always have all those other people around you to pick up when you leave or go on vacation or when you're sick, you know? So, and that's the importance of having, you know, a system in place, just like the CEO of Walmart has a giant system in place. doesn't require on his constant input. He owns that system more or less. Um, and that's, that's all, all we're trying to t- tell you is that it's very doable. Don't think that you have to do this every day. And I'm going to kind of show you a way to make this scalable, at least cut back on your hours right away and uh, pass this along to somebody else and uh, someday. So Yeah, because there's so many people out there, guys, that would love to get paid to go shopping for you. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and that, that would be a dream job to them or a dream side <laughs> job to them. To be able yeah. to, you know, think of a, a, a mom who drops her kids off at school at seven or eight o'clock in the morning and has, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe has the day free till three o'clock and, uh, you know, certainly has stuff she could be doing at home, I'm sure, but maybe needs to make some extra money. Um, mm-hmm. And what kind of, it's kind of hard to find a job that allows you that kind of flexibility, but this certainly does. And if you had an RA position for them just going around and shopping, I mean, that, mm-hmm. they could do that whenever they want. Exactly. So yeah, it's an easy sell that job is. So <laughs> yeah. easily find, I know I've done that. I've been in that position where to find people, it's easy to get people to go, wow, I can get paid to do that. That's awesome. So, <laughs> and so I, you know, a lot of people that are taught, you know, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, mostly retail arbitrage talk that uh, tell you to scan everything. Um, and so I, I was kind of thinking about this saying and I kind of just came up with it. Um, you know, Jim Cockrum d- defines it uh, retail arbitrage as a, uh, you know, it's like an art and science mm-hmm. to it. Uh, finding products locally, buying them cheaply and selling them for a profit online. Um, so the key is uh, art and science and not an exercise in futility mm-hmm. uh, and just standing out there like a mind numb robot and, <laughs> and everything. You are intelligent human beings. Uh, so I thought there's got to be a better way and there is a better way of sourcing whether you do online arbitrage or retail arbitrage. Uh, I know a lot of us, uh, and sometimes when I started off, I just felt like, I'm just like, is this all there is to it? It's not very like, um, I don't know the best word. I, I didn't feel like I was really into it or involved in it. Like I want to be more creative and uh, use my brain a little bit more when I did this. So, you know, I kind of um, perfected my craft, I guess you could say, of sourcing over time because my background is, is a contractor. I work for a family business, very little time. I worked a bunch, okay? So I've been in your situation where I balanced Amazon and a full-time job. So it was very difficult. So I, the only time I had to source really was during during our lunch hour. We got a full hour for lunch. It was a family business, so I took a full hour. Um, but uh, and sometimes on the weekend I would source, but most of the time I was trying to make time for family or pack up all the stuff I bought throughout the week. So uh, it kind of uh, forced me to source in a smart way. So you know, sourcing redefined. You know, it should be higher hourly wage. You should have more free time less headaches and it should be intuitive and this definitely works for new sellers so no doubt about that so my uh, tool of the trade uh, is the amazon seller app it is free uh, honestly there's a couple apps that i would supplement my sourcing with but there's no reason to pay for uh, an app that i see right now i've always had the seller app it used to have profit bandit but it just, it doesn't do the things I need it to do. And so I, I will supplement with Scoutify, which is uh, inventory lab. Uh, and that's only to get ranks in certain categories. But the Amazon seller app is where I go to 99% of the time. And we'll talk about why. You'll s- so at this point, you might, if you have your phone handy, you might want to pull it out because you may be using it here shortly. So <laughs> this uh, is an so, interactive one. Interactive yeah, so we'll this is going to, you know, this is just going to be a real simple strategy. It's not going to blow you away with uh, the products I show you, but I'm just giving you a tiny, tiny taste of what's possible. So I just want to show you, and I did this because uh, the items may not be super exciting, but 
they were they, they were literally the first two things I thought of. The first item was something I looked at in the kitchen. I changed this from what I did last time. This is the first thing I thought of. It was a box of, and you'll see here. So, um, so like sourcing, I try to do things in reverse. A lot of times I start my retail arbitrage and online arbitrage on amazon.com. I don't start on Walmart or wherever I do in reverse. So I use a search bar on the Amazon seller app because it's the same search bar you find on amazon.com. And I use many more tactics, uh, which um, uh, we won't talk about here just for time constraints. So this is literally the first item I <laughs> saw teens. I mean, uh, I, the last time I did this, it was uh, peanut butter. And that yeah. was literally the first thing that pulled out of my uh, my uh, cabinet. And so uh, this is came out of the cabinet in my kitchen. <laughs> so we have these Nabisco original topped with sea salt premium saltine crackers. So this is the case of the missing saltine cracker listing, I guess you could call it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, you have the uh, subject where the saltines and then you are the investigator. Okay. <laughs> investigator. That's very important to remember. Okay. So, you know, your evidence, you're a detective and not a bystander. So, um, uh, we, we know the suspect is easily found in store or online. He has a known new PC. <laughs> we have a recent photograph of him, as you see. And witnesses have provided an accurate description. So we know <laughs> what the box, the description of the product is. We have all the information we need to um, source with. So not just the UPC, because most people just say, all I need is the UPC, right? Nope. You need a lot more than that. Remember, you're a detective. If you were a detective, and I tell this, um, I've told this before, but if you're a detective in a homicide and you just walk, went to the scene of the crime, you saw the chalk outline and go, yep, that was a, he was a shot from that window and didn't do any detective work, you probably wouldn't have a job very long, would you? So uh, <laughs> there's uh, only so much you can tell by uh, just first glance. And that most people, that would be the UPC, so. So, okay, let's start with the UPC. So with your seller app, you'll be able to scan this. I'm gonna pull mine out too. Um, so guys, go to your seller app and- Amazon on. seller app, yeah. Scan. So do your scan, add a product, scan, and then you'll scan the barcode, which I'm doing right here. See, I'm doing it. Me too. So you'll see what it pulls up is very similar to what you see right here without scrolling down. Okay, when we scan the UPC, uh, the things we see, we see the pantry listing, which is always restricted. That's Amazon pantry. No one can list in that. Mm -hmm. we, right, right away, we see a grocery listing as well. So 256, that's what it goes for it. Um, um, that's what it sells for at Walmart. So, but if you keep scrolling down, you start uh, noticing that uh, there's more listings, like there's a pack of two and it's selling for $20. It doesn't have a very good rank. Um, and then you scroll down a little bit more and you notice there's another listing selling for 974. Okay. Not that big of a profit, but I just want to show you that when you scan the UPC initially, you're probably going to see the following. And most people would probably, uh, at this point, just stop here. Okay. And go, Oh, that's no good. Right. Yep. And your last example, when you did the peanut butter one, there was only one listing that came up by the UPC. Mm -hmm. So we're lucky that we had one, two, three, four, five listings come up, uh, which one, two of them, three of them are, are a no-go, either because of rank or pantry, which is restricted. Okay. So. so let's go on to the next step. Now the visual scan, Amazon has a visual scan. That's why I like the Amazon seller app because you can visually uh, scan the picture of the item. It'll pick up on either a name on the box, uh, the picture of the box. It'll find matching photos uh, or items or something of that brand name on Amazon. So as an upper right here, you'll see there's a little camera icon. And if you touch that, and then you can just point it at the saltine box. Okay. That's all you want to do. Just point it there. You'll notice that it brings up 
a lot of listings. And here I scroll down a little bit, just took a screenshot there. Um, but you notice it doesn't just show you the original taco sea salt premium saltine crackers. It also brings up unsalted and whole grain saltine crackers. It also brings up uh, those crackers there, a 12 pack. Uh, there's even a case pack of 24. Um, there are, uh, I mean, a lot of listings. Uh, there's even some premium saltine cracker minis. Look, the point of the way I teach sourcing is just because you have this product doesn't mean you're necessarily looking for just this one product. Right. Yes, you will probably find it. And chances are you'll probably find a profitable listing to sell on. But if you're in a store doing retail arbitrage, the likelihood of the unsalted saltines and the whole grain one sitting right next to it, very, very likely they, they'll put the stuff together in the store. So very quickly, you have the entire story on your seller app right here. And so you could quickly find several listings that you could sell on uh, right there in the store. You're not just scanning one thing and then walking off. Uh, I would say that uh, sellers, that's where sellers leave behind the other 99% of potential products they could sell on, mm -hmm. on the shelf or on the digital shelf online. And they leave it, leave it aside. Don't think about it. And um, so anyway. You know what the difference is? So the difference is like going, guys, going just by UPC is just basically asking Amazon, is this one good? Okay, no. Is this one good? No. Okay, next one. Is this one good? Is this one good? Is this one good? Just one by one. You're just kind of, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. You're going to find mm -hmm. some. You're going to find some that are good, but you're going to have a lot of them that aren't good. Whereas this method is asking Amazon, okay, guys, I'm at Walmart. Uh, Amazon, I'm at Walmart, and I see a bunch of Nabisco stuff. Tell me which ones of the Nabisco items are are going to, are, are good essentially is what you're at. And Amazon just come up with all these listings that are Nabisco listings mm -hmm. because you went one step further and scanned the picture. So now all you have to do is scroll through here and look at the ranks, which of these ranks are interesting to you based on your, your criteria. And so then you would look, okay, I like this one that's 70,000, for example, in grocery. Now let's just go find those. Let's go find a pack. And that's just a pack of two. Um, and so you're, you're letting Amazon tell you what's popular instead of just guessing and picking stuff off the shelves and saying, is this going to be a good item? Okay. No. Is this one going to be good? No. You're just asking Amazon. Okay. You're smart. Amazon. You have all the data. Tell me of all those Nabisco items, which ones I should be looking at. That's essentially the difference. Yeah, exactly. So you're just uh, throwing, throwing out a, you know, a, a net, seeing what else is out there. I, a lot of times with one product, I may find half a dozen mm -hmm. listings to sell on. And these listings are generally replenishable items, meaning that you can go and buy the item and sell, sell it over and over again. And that's what cuts down on a lot of the uh, work for mm -hmm. finding inventory day in and day out. So a lot of times, uh, you could just go back and keep buying the same saltine and sell it on the free pack. Yep. Uh, and uh, instead of just trying to uh, say, Oh, and feel defeated knowing that, you know, you can't sell on a product listing that's selling for the same price it sells for in, on Walmart in Walmart. So, so that's, that's kind of step two of things you could do. You got the UPC that you could scan and then you can scan a picture of the box. Uh, okay. There's a, um, some different ways you can actually scan the box. Um, but uh, generally if you just take a, and I don't know if it, um, yeah, it works both on iPhone and Android. It's a continuous scan that uh, right now only works on Android, but that's not important to do this. You don't need that. Um, so let's go to the next part. And uh, I accidentally erased it. I just now realized, but here I did the type in. So, what you're doing when you type in here is uh, I, I typed in a Nabisco saltines. Uh, I think I typed Nabisco saltine crackers. So I'm just, when I do this, I'm tapping into the amazon.com search bar. If I type this on yeah. in on amazon.com, I would get the same results. So this is what a consumer would do. They would probably type in Nabisco saltine crackers or 
just type in saltine crackers. You could do that as well. And we'll talk about that here in this next example. But uh, you will find that, hey, there's a, the consumer is going to see this listing for a pack of two for $15, which mm -hmm. seems crazy. Why, when I know as a consumer, but uh, that they only cost two fifty six, you know, at Walmart. You got to remember, though, not everyone thinks like we do. Okay, the consumer thinks a lot differently, and they generally are not as educated, maybe, on what products actually cost. And when we're sellers, we're more in tune to what products cost. So don't think that, you know, that's an absurd price or something. Someone is obviously buying it out there. Um, I looked at the Keepa graph and it looked, looked fine. <clears throat> you know, I think Amazon would come into stock on occasion on that one. Uh, it might've been a different one, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't try to say that's, that's not reasonable. You can always look at Keepa and put in the ASIN in there and, and double check to make sure, is this, is this a, a the real deal here? Cause am I really going to be able to sell this for $15 and I'll, more times than not, the answer is yes. You can sell it for that much. So trust me, I do it all the time. So, so and there are many more profitable listings. Uh, actually, when I was typing this in earlier and I was doing this from creating the presentation, I typed in saltines uh -huh. and I found these Zesta brands, saltines, uh, that also had, I found two other profitable listings. I had never seen Zesta salt, saltine listing before. As a brand new replenishable to me, so were these. So all these items are brand new to me. So that tells you the possibilities are just about seemingly endless as yep. far as products you can sell on. So yep. And uh, Danny, you going to talk about how you'll find these hidden, like the bundles and stuff, or do you mm -hmm. want me to bring that up real quick? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Kind of, we'll talk about that on the next okay. part. Okay. Cool. So on this next. Um, Next uh, cert, I just wanted to share something a little bit different than I normally do. You know, this is case study two. You could do a broad, real broad search. Uh, sometimes this is how I do online arbitrage. I'll just type in a brand name, like Libman in this example. Mm -hmm. um, so what this is doing, let's say you were, you know, in a store like Walmart or Home Depot, and you know nothing about a brand. Instead of scanning everything like most people would tell you to do, why don't you just type in the brand name, you know, <laughs> and just see really quick, is this even worth going after? You see a lot of good listings that have good ranks and maybe you don't see Amazon. You, okay. You should probably investigate further. Um, but that will quickly tell you, is this even worth checking all these products? Um, and you can do lots of things. Uh, in this example, I just typed in Littman, but you can take advantage of the Amazon search, um, search bar, tap into its intelligence. You can type things in like Lidman bundle, or you could type in Lidman pack, and then you'll find listings that are multi-packs or possibly bundles. Because um, because when people create listings, you're supposed to put the word bundle in a listing title. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's gonna be a bundle or the word pack will show up, if it's a pack of 12 or a pack of two, those listings generally don't come up like the six pack listing. Right. When you scan a barcode, you're not going to see that listing. Almost why, so why, why won't those come up? Because they've used a different UPC. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Or they have an exemption, a UPC yeah. exempt GTIN exemption, or they use a different UPC that they bought online. And so, and there's no way of, you know, you knowing what that UPC is. So exactly. in the manufacturer's UPC, you're only going to bring up those products that were listed with the manufacturer's UPC, which is usually maybe just one or two items. That's right. Um, but you're never yes. going to see the variations of products. You're never going to see bundles. You're never going to see multi-packs. So, you know, this, when you source this way and do it more or less, as I say, intelligent, you <laughs> uncover a lot of hidden, um, potential profit that wow. most people are going to miss. You guys see how cool this is? Because I was taught to scan, 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 scan. I'd sit in an aisle and scan every product. And maybe you come out with two things. Sometimes you wouldn't get anything. You're so frustrating. Like I'm spending all this time just scanning these barcodes mindlessly. Um, and so now when I've 
heard about Danny's method, I'm like, darn it, I was doing it the wrong way. Or think about a store like Big Lots, for example. I used to go into that store and scan barcodes, but nothing comes up at Big Lots with the barcodes. No, um, no. But I would stop. I would just quit and like go to a different store because I, this is not working. Um, all I had to do was either take a picture of the outside of the package or type in um, – you know, a brand name, even though it's big lots is, you know, generic brands, those things will come up. You'll find those listings that are hidden, hidden in quotes, meaning they're there, but you just don't find them with the UPC codes. And so this is just taking it one more, two more at the most steps beyond what most sellers will do. Um, and you do that, you do a little bit more work, a little bit more investigative effort you're going to be way ahead of everybody else who's just mindlessly scanning product after product. Exactly. So this is what I'm talking about living and thriving in the fringes of Amazon away from all these. Uh, look at these they are one seller, one seller. This one down here says two. That's just the first three products. So <laughs> that's where I want to be. I don't want to be on the listing that says there's, 100 or 50 or 300 yeah. sellers during Q4. Sometimes you see absurd things like there are 675 sellers. <laughs> love about, yeah, this is going to work out well for me. Exactly. Oh my gosh. And I got to get the buy box and I got to. So I got to lower the price to get the buy box. And so I'm losing yeah. money on these things. And then 600, 600 other repricers are trying to reprice, you know, it's, right. it's not a, it's not a winning combination. Right. And that you don't want to find that's how the race to the bottom glut of inventory and not enough demand low prices. You know, it's you can't really get mad at everyone else that supposedly tanks the price is just supply and demand. So, yeah. So, you know, when I when I type in Libman, just talk about a little bit, I scroll through here, you'll get a ton of listings. So I'm just kind of really quickly browsing anything that has like decent ranks like this does mm -hmm. uh, this one's cut off but it has a decent rank for home this is a pretty good rank so you can look at these two sellers this one happens to have 13 this one only has five sellers so this particular listing is uh, eight dollars you can actually buy the the cheapest place to buy the singles is on amazon so you can buy them from amazon uh, don't buy them prime, just buy them standard shipping. And uh, then you can turn around and send them back in as a two pack oh my gosh. and make $5 profit. Okay. Wow. So, again, if a lot, a lot of times when I source, I just buy the inventory from Amazon. They sell the big, they sometimes they sell big multi packs or single packs oh. so cheaply. You can just buy it and then, break it out of a big pack and sell them smaller uh -huh. packs or take a small pack and sell them bigger packs. Either so way. Like saltine crackers, the ones that we saw earlier, the pantry listing was $2 and 56 cents, but the two pack was 15 bucks. Yeah, exactly. You could just, it's, it's not, <laughs> it's really simple. And, uh, you know, if you could find a place where you can get better cash back, you know, uh -huh. say eBay or whatever, buy it, buy it there. Yeah, uh, Walmart or whatever. But, you know, in a pinch, sometimes Amazon's the only place where you can find the inventory cheaply. Mm. So sometimes I buy stuff from there. We do it. We've done it many times when we source live and our, our group. We I literally have people buying the products as I find them. because <laughs> I do <it> buy it. <laughs> It's happened many times. And you know what? They always did really well. So, OK, Danny, I'm going to I want to shamelessly plug your prep center. So what would a let's say that I, I don't want to do this myself. I don't want to go on Amazon and buy two packs and have it sent to my house and put them in bundles. What can I do? So you could just um, use our prep center as uh, the ship to address. And then when it arrives here, we bundle it for you or multi pack it for you, label it prep it, send it in for you. It is a, we'll talk, we'll touch on it just briefly at the okay. end, but it is a, uh, uh, Jim Cockrum, um, approved prep center partner. Uh -huh. So there's only two of us, my fulfillment team and pro prep and fulfillment, which is my prep center. Um, so, you know, that's something you can, that's one part of how we always preach outsourcing, you know, you, you utilize a prep center or, uh, work with a manufacturer who will ship stuff into Amazon for you, something like that. So that's right. And guys, there'd be enough profit on that right there, that $5 profit. You could easily hire Danny's prep center and yeah, still we're very inexpensive over. Yeah, for prep. So, um, okay. Other, and I, this is real quick. 
as I scroll through here, I'm showing you other profitable listings. Um, real quick, I saw this one, $8 profit, profit calculator. This one, same thing, different type, $8 profit, one seller, one seller. Wow. That's, that's where you want to be, right? This only has four sellers. Those are the type of listings you want to be, uh, be on. There's no worry of race to the bottom. Typically, the price just stays rock solid at $41.99 or whatever mm -hmm. uh, the price happens to be. And you're just happy to sell alongside the other person, you know, mm -hmm. trade the buy box. So it's kind of nice. <laughs> and you know what? You can just keep buying these over and over again and send them in. So mm. uh, let's see. And real quick, I just want to touch on, I've showed people this in the past, but this is something that I call my retail hierarchy. So if you do retail arbitrage, even online arbitrage, uh, you know, this, this kind of talks about, you know, here's, here's all the Amazon sellers. The gravitational pool is very strong. Uh, <laughs> and everyone, you know, doesn't fly too high. They'll shop at Walmart a lot. That's why you see a lot of race to the bottom. You buy, ooh, online arbitrage. I found this great deal at Walmart. You, just, you mm -hmm. rush to send it in and the price is shot. I mean, just tank break even at best. Um, Toys R Us, not really relevant at this time, but I should have updated that. So that might be Home Depot. And since Toys R Us may not be with us any longer, they're on life support. So Kmart, you know, there's not a lot of Kmarts either. So that might be, uh, um, I would say that would be like a, uh, a Meyer or a TJ Maxx or um, a Ross or something like that. You kind of feel a weight being lifted because you're shopping where few people will go. Not to mention that a lot of that stuff that they sell, you can't access it online. So mm -hmm. your, your competition is eliminated greatly just right there. So regional stores. Now that is my real bread and butter. Regional stores, meaning is something that's only in the Southeast, the Northeast, the Midwest, or a store that only exists in the West Coast, Northwest, wherever, Southwest. Those are stores that you can really thrive, uh, thrive, in, especially you do retail arbitrage, even the online arbitrage. A lot of these regional stores you can buy on their website. I know of several. My top retail arbitrage store is a store that has no, no website. I mean, it has a website, but you can't buy anything on it, off of it. And I, I never, ever have issues with, Price, price is tanking. It's just huge profits. Um, and that's where you can really thrive. So spend your time wisely. Maybe not go to Walmart as often. When you get more experience, you can shop at Walmart. You know, what is that unique item that's in clearance that not every Walmart has? Because they have a lot of old, stale merchandise, just like Kmart. Kmart's only store where I found a Lego set that was 10 years old sitting on the shelf. And I just pulled off the shelf. It was dusty. It was hidden behind some others. Pulled it out of there, you know, Kmart's the king of discontinued items. Staples used to be my top store, Kmart and Staples. Uh, big money you can make there with Staples uh, in Kmart. Those are not places you hear about uh, people talking where they shop all the time. Most people are talking about the same stores, Walmart, Toys R Us, Kmart, Home Depot, Lowe's. Uh, they're talking about TJ Maxx, they're talking about Ross, they're talking about all these other stores that I generally just don't go to. Uh, and go to other places. Maybe I go to Kroger and I go to uh, CVS or I go to a lot of these regional stores, Tractor Supply, places like that where most people do not go. Mm. So I just wanted to share that. And uh, if you're struggling with problems with profitability, it's probably, if you look and that analyze your business, probably because you're shopping at these stores would be my guess. Mm. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that you have to be very careful, uh, especially during Q4, shopping at these uh, major uh, retailers. So Danny, your method's all really about just going where other people aren't, both both yeah, exactly. the stores that you pick to mm -hmm. source from, and then the items that you're selecting in those stores. Yes, be selective. Uh, it's not retail arbitrage, online arbitrage is just it's very important what you don't buy as it is what you do buy. Oh, that's uh, so people true. buy some very stale merchandise. And I, I've spent a lot of time in people's accounts with them 
and I we talk about okay, what was your rationale by buying this one million ranked item that's been sitting in your account? You just pay storage fees on it, and it cost you twenty bucks. Uh, mm-hmm. You could you could have rolled that twenty bucks over, you know, five, six, seven times by now, turned it into two hundred dollars instead of having it tied up. A lot of the problems with new sellers, uh, they don't follow a very good ranking chart. Okay, don't don't follow the ranking charts you see floating around out there. They're pretty much worthless because they just give you a percentage, uh, the top 1%, 3%, 5%. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, that doesn't tell you anything about sales in that category. Top 1% in video games is way different than top 1% in kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, the top 1% is not very necessarily very good in video games. You start buying out close to the top 1%. Um, you know, you're going to get into some really thin, very thin uh, volumes. Um, the top uh, the top 1% in the uh, kitchen or um, home and household might be uh, 5 million or 3 million. You don't want to be buying products out that far. You're just going to sit there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to buy products that are in the top maybe... I suggest on average, most of my rankings are probably a top half to a quarter percent in the category. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's plenty of inventory that fall well within those guidelines, but every category has a very unique, you know, ranking. So it's not, I don't just give this uh, top 3% or stay under the top 3% all the stuff. That's what gets people in trouble. Don't do that. Uh, so regional stores, again, uh, here's a little list I found. Heb, Safeway, uh, Albertsons, you know, Save-A-Lot, King's, Scoopers. I don't even know what this stuff is. I live in a town that has like five major retailers and that's it. So if I can make it work, I know you can. <laughs> so, uh, and I live in a place that just doesn't have a lot of shopping opportunities. So, you know, stay away from the herd. Like I said, uh, you know, everyone's jumping off a cliff. Source smart. Build relationships with other people in the community. Uh, they might have access to other stores you do not. Uh, they may be able to sell items that are restricted for you, and they are not restricted. So it's good to find there's a lot of great people in this community, and it's just you know meet meet one of them at CES or a conference next time, and build a relationship. Relationships are where it's at. Uh, partnerships uh, with people in the community. That's really what helps elevate my business to the next level. Okay, so you know, moving on. So let's let's get to why why we're here, or what I think might might help you out here. So I do a lot of um, like I said, we do as far as Amazon goes. I don't just do retail arbitrage. I do it now mostly because I love it, and I do online arbitrage uh, because I teach it, and I also do a lot of wholesale. I do a lot of private label also. Uh, do a lot of things I like to do with exclusive selling agreements. So I tried to do everything. So I didn't just stay in the arbitrage realm. Mm-hmm. I kind of evolved and, you know, kept, uh, as, uh, as I say, bolting on other parts of your business, you know, and keep, uh, keep doing that. And I've done that because I've had a great support group and partners and people I surround myself with mm-hmm. that I work with and, so, you know, with that in mind, you know, how are you, if you're trying to go it alone, that's very tough. I know because I try to go it alone. As soon as, as soon as I surrounded myself with like-minded people that were better than me, they became my role models, my mentors, and that's really what helped elevate my business. So I think that's one, one way that you can achieve your goals. So I have a, a like a proposal to you, a plan, um, I, I run a group that's uh, uh, called Amazon Legends. Um, it's full of people who are just amazing people. And you can't words can't describe how awesome the people are in that group. Uh, we have people that are huge, huge sellers. We have several people who sell seven figures in sales. Um, people, we have people in the group. I know one person that does eight figures in sales. Mm. Uh, that's a pretty lofty number. So. Uh, there's a, a people of all backgrounds, uh, all different goals, but I, I feel like we all kind of have the same future. Uh, we want to find a place where we can own a system and, uh, you know, kind of control our business, have a handle over it. 
and we're all about diversifying our business and we keep each other motivated. It's a great support group. And we all kind of have the, you know, like I said, a common goal in mind, whether that's most of us want to just come home, spend more time with our family, Mm -hmm. spend more time doing the things we love, whether it's you want to volunteer, just spend time with your kids and your wife or your husband, your grandparents, whatever your parents uh, take care of loved ones who are, don't have any money or others. So there, we all have pretty similar goals and it's usually a mixture of all those. So Amazon Ledge has been around for, uh, let's see, about a year and a half now. Mm-hmm. Almost a year and a half. And, and it started on this webinar. <laughs> it started on a webinar uh, in December of 20, 2016. 2016. So, yep. So D- Danny, we'll jump in real quick here because um, what happened was uh, Danny was um, talking about and he, one thing he didn't mention tonight, and there's so much stuff. He, we could be on for hours and hours and hours talking about this stuff and going way deeper. But one, um, one strategy Danny talks about in the group is using the favorites list on your Amazon seller app. So here's how it becomes more of a long-term strategy that you could even hand this off to somebody else to do. So you find that all these listings that are kind of quote hidden that we talked about, maybe they're bundles that somebody else created or multi-packs that somebody else created that don't come up with the UPC code. So I want to re- want you to remember these three things. You know, most people teach UPC code, just scan that. You don't see anything, move on to the next product. That's what we all learned until I met Danny. So then you go one step further as an investigator of this. Okay. You're looking for those missing listings here that we talked about with the saltine crackers. Um, one step further is you scan a pic, scan the barcode or scan the barcodes first, scan the packaging, and then you're going to find out all these other listings. And then the third thing is use the type in method. So maybe you type in Nabisco, maybe you type in saltine crackers, or as his other example, maybe you, um, what was the other example you used to, to type in the name, um, whatever it was. I don't remember the, the second example, um, that you used. Oh yeah. The, um, uh, Libman. The Libman, yeah, or just type in Libman. So imagine, guys, you're in a Walmart or any other store, and you see this long line of Libman products. So you have one choice. You, you're, most people will just pick up this and scan it, pick up this and scan it, whereas you can just type in Libman. Amazon's going to show you. By typing that in, you're most likely going to find every Libman product that's on Amazon with that term um, because if you have a Libman product, you're going to put that in the name. And so then you just go through and look at the list, the look at the go, look at the sales rank, and then you look and see, okay, this one's good, and it also looks like it's way more than what retail should be. Mm-hmm. So then your next step is you just look on the shelf and find the product to match that, versus just picking up products and scanning them. You're asking Amazon, what are the best Libman products, and then you just go find those on the shelf. And that's how when I talk about in my email that I sent out to you guys that Danny did three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars part time one year that he, he, when he was still working a regular job with the, um, you know, he was the con- on the contracting job with his, uh, his dad. Um, he only had his lunch breaks, so he didn't have time to go and scan every Libman product. So he had to come up with a new method. And that's how this came about is ask Amazon, what are the best Libman products? So I want you guys to remember, those are the three things. If you remember those, mm-hmm. your, your whole RA sourcing is revolutionized for life. Um, and then the other thing is the favorites list. So you find some good listings, you can favorite them in the seller app, and then you can just literally go back and hit those every single time that you need to replenish. So you could give, you could have a shopper um, that you maybe is not where you want to train them how to do RA, like figuring out the ranks and all your parameters. You can just say, look, here's this list, go buy these things. You can share that, that data with them. They can have their own seller app that's logged into your account and they can see your favorites list and just go buy those things. And so that's how it becomes more of a long-term thing. You're not out mm-hmm. shopping all the time if you don't want to be. You're finding new product opportunities. Maybe you're going into private label or wholesale. You have somebody else doing your RA stuff for you. So I just wanted to share that. So the, that's how the Legends Group started. Danny talked about all these favorites yeah. that he had. He had lists of hundreds of items. And I thought, oh, wait, wait, wait. Danny's got all this stuff. Surely you know, he's not buying all of them anymore. Would he be willing to share some of those with a group of people? Mm-hmm. So I asked him on the webinar, hey, I have an idea. And mm-hmm. would you be willing to share some of these these favorite listings that you have? Mm-hmm. And he's like, sure, absolutely. So that's how the Legends group was born. Um, it was a small, intimate group of, I don't know how many we started out with. Um, but, uh, it was awesome. And it's grown to so, so much more than that. 
Um, Danny keeps adding stuff into it and he'll, he'll share that, but just wanted to let you guys know about the favorites. If you can add that into your, you start doing that, then it becomes more, you, all your replenishable listings can be in that list and you just go back and uh, replenish it whenever you need to. Yeah. So I see, I see some of your questions and I'll make sure to answer them at the end. So no worries. Um, just want to let you know, I saw your question about ranking and all that. So I'll make sure to answer all that. Um, so, you know, the, the whole point when we started this group, like Ryan says, started off just being retail arbitrage. And the focus of this past March was wholesale mm -hmm. uh, and private labels. So, you know, we do everything because a lot of people have been in the group for a year and a half now. Yes, that we have a lot of people have been there a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, their business has evolved to a point where they're past, uh, they still do a ton of retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, but they're well into private label and wholesale and even just more recently into uh, selling exclusives and mm -hmm. uh, and a couple of the uh, groups that have um, of some of these sellers have built together. So, and we'll talk about that here more, but you know, it's a, it's amazing to see how far people have evolved and there's a ton of people that as we'll, we'll mention later that have came home from their nine to five jobs and now do spend all their time with their family and, and do this uh, as, you know, something they love and they spend all their time together, no more nine to five job. They work from home and travel together, do things together. There's a lot of people like that in that group, in this group now. Uh, so just real quick, like as, as Ryan mentioned, you know, it's a, it's a tight knit group of uh, people. It's a very small group. Uh, I, I would even, uh, so much to say is kind of an exclusive group. It definitely is very exclusive. We only open in it every three months. Um, and we have, um, we do all things Amazon. It's not just retail arbitrage, but we do go anything through private label Shopify. There's tons of content to, um, as you'll see, there's just, and I keep adding on to it, which is crazy in my mind. I keep thinking back, why am I still adding <laughs> stuff? This is crazy, but I don't know. That's just what I like to do. So, and that's what Jim does too. That's what we have all learned. And he's that we just yeah. constantly give value and people appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. And it just, it just makes us have people that really love being in there. Um, Cause they know it's going to keep getting better there. I know a lot of you, um, if you would you know, figure out what are all your subscriptions to tools, groups, whatever you would find out that I'm actually paying quite a bit. And uh, maybe it's time to uh, kind of rethink and kind of, uh, you know, streamline your whole process a little bit. And I'll explain because over here, you see all these little bubbles. You're like, oh, my gosh, is he going to talk about all that stuff now? I'm literally just going to spend like two seconds on each thing. But uh, that's everything that's included with Legends. It started off with one thing. And now some of these include two or three things on them. So I think there's probably like 25 to 30 perks to being in oh Amazon God. Legends at this point now. And uh, we're about to dump a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> in a few weeks. I mean, it's going to be the, and the, it's a one-stop shop for everything selling on Amazon or eBay or outside of that e-commerce in general, as you'll see. Yep. Danny, I don't, don't, uh, don't go through it too fast though. Cause it, it is, uh, for imagine yeah. something, a lot of people have been doing, uh, maybe I know like, uh, we have Christy Hertzler and Christy Michelle on, you know, they're both in the group. So they already heard all this stuff and know this. Um, yeah. but there's a lot of folks that have never heard this before. So, um, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in if there's anything I think we need to explain further, but mm -hmm. don't go too fast for it. Cause there's uh, just so much stuff, but we do want you to understand what everything is there. What all's there. So just stay tight. Trust me, it'll be worth it to, to <laughs> listen to all this. When you watch a recording, feel free to send us any questions you have. So uh, I have, I've dedicated my sourcing VAs to Legends. Uh, I have six sourcing VAs now, and they all work for Legends. And so they just dump deals into uh you know, these WhatsApp groups that are small subdivided groups, A through F. And all they do is dump deals. And they're mostly just to help you with your thinking. Okay. They're giving you hints like, hey, you don't necessarily have to buy this item, but they're telling you 
and I've taught them this is to, this is a, this is a big hint for you to go check out this website, this sale, because there are a lot of other good deals. So you might want to check it out. So they dump that stuff in there knowing, and this is the least exciting thing about legends in my opinion. Um, right. And it's probably the most boring thing about legends, honestly, if I was to pick one. So that's why I guess I put it first, um, and maybe work up to the better things at the end. So, so that's just one thing, Monday through Friday, I have VAs that are in the groups constantly. And that's their whole job just to uh, put RA and OA fines into the group. So, so we have a guy who um, will compile all the fines in WhatsApp group into an Excel sheet. And again, this is kind of a sheet where you can work off of and like we talked about Libman. So you may see, hey, there's a lot of products under this brand. I'm going to investigate it further. Mm -hmm. And that is how a lot of people have found a lot of good products and a lot of great replenishables is working off that list. You're not necessarily looking at it because some of those deals expire. Sales don't last forever on online arbitrage. So, but you go, you know what? I'm going to investigate this uh, brand a little bit more closely. And, I'm, and a lot of people will find, you know, like we just showed maybe three or four replenishables fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. So we do that. So you don't have to hunt through the groups and find all those deals. So third thing is we have a course very, very, uh, there's a guy in our group. Uh, he's got a big heart, Chris Rizzo. Um, he, he's, he made this a very extensive, elaborate course on how to hire and manage a VA. It even has a login for a VA to go into and train as videos, training your VA how to source and how to fill out these Excel sheets with these very strenuous and constraining uh, um, criteria before they can even put a find onto a list. <laughs> so the whole point of, uh, of this is to help you get your own VA because that's important. They work for you exclusively. So all the finds, yeah, they're going to find things that other VAs are finding, but they're also going to find a lot of winners too. And so they're going to put those on the list and then you can go through Monday through Friday. You're always going to have this, these items that you can pick from that you can buy from. And we teach them to not source at the uh, main run the mill stores. They're searching some pretty niche off the wall websites. And that's the way we've always taught them. So it's a very elaborate, extensive course, tons of videos. It took them a very long time to build this. And he has graciously, given this to legends for free and uh, we can, uh, so it's there for you to access. Um, he spent months and months and months creating this course and uh, we're very fortunate to have him in the group. So uh, moving on here, I have a, and this is going to be hard to explain, but I have this tool called stock predictor. So I made it last Q4 to predict I had a, I hired a VA who was a mathematician, worked for a university in Europe. She made this algorithm that would predict what items would run out of stock during Q4 that Amazon would run out of stock on. And we would jump in there and merchant fulfill the stuff. So mm. anyway, this is undergoing some major updates because I want it to work year round and not just during Q4. We know it works during Q4. A lot of people uh, sourced off this list. As you can see, here's a little screenshot of it. And uh, even had the probability likelihood that Amazon will run out of stock on it. So it's going under some major updates. We're tapping into the huge database of Keepa, and it's going to help us source products. And uh, that's, that's another free thing. We reinvest um, tons of uh, dollars into developing new tools or legends. Um, we just like to do that. There'll be a stopping point uh, where we kind of see that in sight, but, you know, um, we're just trying, we have a way of tying all these tools together. And once that's completed later this year, you'll see this uh, kind of this transformation of how all these tools work together. And you're really not going to need any tools uh, because we will have a tool for that. What, no matter what tool you use, we'll have one already in Legends. <laughs> so a custom a Amazon extension, a Chrome extension I had developed. If you've used ASIN, Spectre, it's getting an update. It's going to work like that, but it's going to have a lot more features. Right now, what this tool does 
It's free for you to use. It works fine. I'll use it all the time. It finds and scrapes all of the unavailable listings on Amazon and displays them to you in the easy to read format Excel sheet. So what are unavailable listings? Well, there's tens of millions of them on Amazon. These are listings that there are no longer any sellers on. They're currently unavailable. No Amazon, no sellers are just wide open. You can jump on a lot of these listings. Yeah, some of them are discontinued or you can't source the item. I've merchant fulfill on a lot of these listings and just to test them. And uh, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of bundles that have been abandoned, uh, a lot of seasonal listings that you can find. Uh, I'll run this before Christmas or whatever, and you can find a lot of uh, bundles that used to sell really well, and you can just jump on them. They're even made. And you can sell on them. So that's the next Chrome extension available to you, which is getting a huge facelift. And actually, it's I, we already have a working prototype. And if you don't have Jungle Scout, well, it replaces that. So it would be a kind of free version of Jungle Scout plus Ace Inspector. Cool. Um, so you'll see. You know, I'm testing the uh, I'm beta testing the new version of it right now. So we have unbelievable amounts of recorded content. I do webinars all the time. <laughs> I like to do live sourcing webinars, just every topic, you know. Yep. And we have our own very own Legends website where all the stuff is compiled. So you don't have to go hunting around Facebook to find it. So it is all on the pin post in the group. But uh, we, we made a website where all the Legends members can go. That's, you know, gated. You can log in and get all that information and find all those perks that we just talked about, all the uh, webinars that you want to watch. Days and days of webinars. Prep Center discount, 10% off uh, our, our, our rates on our website, which a lot of people in the group, I know this, this is pretty awesome, but they save enough money in their prep discount, which is already one of the lowest or probably is one of the best deals out there because our overhead is so low. So we pass that savings along. They get 10% off and just on their prep savings, they pay for their way in legends every month. So proprepandfulfillment.com is completely 100% automated. All you have to do is put in your merchant SKU in the software. We do all the labels, the shipments, everything. Not your typical prep center for sure. Amazon account management, this is launching April 21st during our conference, which is coming up at Nashville Legends Conference. All your non-revenue generating tasks are automated with Amazon account management. And I've, it all works. We have it. It's done. We're just beta testing it. It includes keyword tools, inventory management, feedback generator, so you don't need feedback genius anymore. As a listing builder, refund reimbursements are automated, and it has... Uh, probably 10 other tools uh, uh, included as well. And uh, a lot of the, uh, we're, we're building out of this program, uh, this website, which I'm not going to mention it yet, but out of this website, it'll basically encase every Amazon tool uh, that you would ever need to run your business all under one, one roof. Uh -huh. So you don't have to have all these subscriptions to all these different tools out there. The developer we found amazing developer and he's done all this before he's a top notch so he's he's uh, this is going to be launching here yeah, don't right. gloss over that the refund reimbursement set right there guys would uh, <laughs> more this, than enough to pay for anything that we're going to talk about here in a minute as far as thousands price. and thousands of dollars are waiting for you to be reimbursed and yeah. we don't charge anything for this it comes free with your membership to legends most people charge 25 percent of your reimbursement amount. We don't charge that. Even when this launches outside of Legends, we're not gonna do that. It's just gonna be a flat price, which is not gonna be much less than what it costs to be in Legends, so. Yeah. So, live sourcing videos, uh, Facebook live sourcing videos, I uh, do from online art arbitrage a lot and occasionally in store when I can, when I can get good signal, so. <laughs> New webinars every month. Actually, it's new webinars every week, really. That's true. Watch myself. Watch myself. Not just me, but others provide mega content <laughs> that changes every time. It's always something new. I always teach something new. Or, yeah, we got like Kate in there who's a Keepa expert. She learns how to, she taught, teaches how to break down a Keepa graph. We got Brittany who's a couponing expert. 
We have Mike, who's a, a, an expert on doing merch mm -hmm. um, to local businesses. If you have a merch account, guys, there it's un really unbelievable like how much this has grown just from, oh, Danny, hey, I think we should share some of items in your favorites on your seller app and share some RA and OA deals mm -hmm. to a group of people and provide them some content. It's just blown up. I mean, now like Danny and I work together on this, but I don't he doesn't even ask me like, Hey, can I do this? He just throws, does stuff in there and adds new pieces of software. And I find out later that, Oh, this is a, you know, a $5,000 piece of software. He's getting ready to launch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. So it, uh, it's only going to keep getting better. So I know Amazon Canada, we have a partner prep center in Toronto. Uh, mm -hmm. if you ever want to sell on Amazon Canada, we've done it for you. There's no, we've taken all the guesswork out of it. We do it all for you, literally. Uh, we All you have to do is put things in a box and uh, we send you a label and you slap the label on it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else. So if you want to sell on Amazon Canada, which is very, very profitable, wide open for you. Uh, we also, we're going to be launching uh, here soon. We have a member of the group uh, that's going to be, as you know, Amazon Australia. Mm -hmm. is opening so that's something we are uh, discovering and uh, that's going to be a possibility here very soon yeah guys that's awesome the amazon canada thing literally pauline takes it to where you don't have to mess with the customs the shipping all that you just like all the worries that you think about when going into a new country you have to fill out all these forms pauline yep. does it all for you yep. do it all for you it's crazy so we have a bundle group a facebook group lena has a it builds listings bundle listings for you um and uh so that's uh, something uh, that's an extra cost uh, because there just there was no way around it so um so that's something that is available through the legends bundles group uh, we do generally have two conferences a year we're gonna write like i said we're gonna write, have one in april mm -hmm. in nashville but in the past we've had it here Gaylord in Dallas, Texas. Last year we had them both in Texas. So mm -hmm. they're very, very low cost, you know, so, uh, and packed with content. It's just content. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we even go out and source together. So all kinds of things you can, you can do at the uh, legends conference. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we have WhatsApp groups. Uh, you know, the WhatsApp groups are there for you. Uh, if you want to ever ask a question to an expert, you will get an answer in generally 60 seconds or less. Uh, it's pretty amazing. We have a great core group of admins and help uh, that are just waiting there to help you. WhatsApp, don't need to keep up with the conversations that are going on. Just look at it as a drive-by service. You're going to ask a question. Great. Well, we have them organized by topics, Canada or Q&A or your fines group or outsourcing. Just go in there, ask a question, get an answer, and you can leave. So you don't need to read all the messages. That's my job. So you have dedicated Facebook group groups. Uh, we have uh, four groups now. Uh, you can, as a university, just choose what you want to join. So, and we'll talk about what those things are. We have a Legends app, which is, is a really cool update. Get, uh, it's almost finished on this. Uh, so all your finds, all these bolo finds, these replenishables, what this does, Legends app, uh, you can save them underneath the store. Walmart, Target, you can save all your Amazon listings under that so you know where to buy those products from. You don't forget something on your list. Uh, it's, it's also getting an, an update to tell you how many, a lot of people ask me, well, how many should I buy of a product? Well, the, the Legends app is going to tell you <laughs> how many you should buy. Um, it's, it's tapped in some pretty cool APIs we had created, uh, which those are data feeds from Amazon, some custom ones we made that take a bunch of data, cram it, run it through an algorithm and spit it out and tell you, hey, based on all the things we know about this listing, here's how many units you should buy. So, and it's going to have some, oh, another cool thing, but it'll be a surprise. So we have a sourcing agent for China. So if you're you're one step away from China, uh, Grace in our group. She's from Singapore. She speaks perfect English and perfect Mandarin. So, uh, and she's always available uh, to talk. She give you a free consultation if you want to source anything from a manufacturer in China, not some middleman. 
She will find you the manu- manufacturer in China or a trading company in some cases because you can't always get the manufacturer, but she will find it for you and save you thousands of dollars and help you door to door service, uh, um, sourcing products when you're ready to do that. You don't have to, it's just there to use whenever you want to. Uh, we have print on demand. This launches April 10th, next Tuesday. So we have a print on demand service for legends members. It, it'll be outside of legends as well, but we want to tell you that you don't need Amazon merch. If you can't get Amazon merch or you're stuck with all these tiers, Mm-hmm. Don't worry about that. That's all going to be go away. You can sell everything on Amazon still. Mm-hmm. Still, you can get rid of the design, the design limits virtually. Uh, they'll still be somewhat of a cap. It's going to be a lot higher than what you're experiencing. You have more control of your listings because you're not listing them in the novelty tees. You can list them into uh, just the regular clothing garments. You can even put them in Amazon custom. You can have more control over keywords, running ads for your products. So Mm. very cool print on demand service. We own our own printing equipment in our warehouses. So we print it. We're not outsourcing this. We own the quality. So quality control is big. We have very experienced printers. We use DTG printers like this one. Um, Same technology that Amazon uses, but uh, ours is compared to Amazon, much higher quality. The Mm. garments are way, way nicer than Amazon's. Uh, and you can put your graphic anywhere you want. doesn't matter. You can make it small, big, left breast, right breast, hem, wherever you want to put it. Back, front, it doesn't matter. So the flexibility, the opportunities are limitless for print on demand through, through our, uh, we have the warehousing fulfillment and the print uh, capability. So that allows us to print your shirt, ship it to your customer for you. We can even print them and ship them into Amazon for you if you want to do Prime. So we have two new free resources. Uh, we have a legendary. If you need to generate some cash flows, we have a couponing group. A member of our group is very, very, very good at couponing and finding deals, free money deals. Uh, legendary couponing finds is a Facebook group. We post all the finds in the Facebook group. A lot of penny finds. Uh, well, you'll know what that is when you join. <laughs> but <laughs> the local merch legends group is with a million dollar merch seller and a legends member. Um, you may have heard of him, Mike Wall. Uh, he's uh, giving all of this course content free to legends only group here. Uh, a lot of stuff that you won't hear anywhere else. So find out how he sells hundreds of thousands of shirts, uh, 100,000 plus shirts in one month. So you're not worried about making, creating designs, uh, you know. So even more perks. We got new international markets like we talked about. We have a financial advisor in the group. We have new Chrome extensions coming out, print on demand, mastermind groups, and Shopify store builder. All this stuff is coming and or is coming within the next week or two. So and uh, oh, bookkeeping service. Uh, and, oh, and account air, accounting <laughs> person. That's, uh, bookkeeping that'll launch on April 21st as well. So if you need a good e-commerce bookkeeper oh and you want to outsource your bookkeeping, that's going to be something available to you as well. So wow. when we get that question. Anyway, we take what people want or are concerned about and we try uh-huh. to find a solution. And that's why we have all these solutions for everything. So let's look at the power of the proof here. I know all these people and they're dear friends of mine. I don't know them all very well. Um, These are people that a lot of them have come home from their nine to five jobs. This was taken before Legends. This is the first year during Legends. This is direct effect effect of Legends. Uh, This person I know, uh, her husband was able to come home from work uh, from his teaching job. And now they work together from home and stay home with their kids. And um, she doubled her sales. And actually, uh, her sales have, are even much, much higher. Um, she she actually had a, uh, in a very, very profitable December and sold well over $100,000 in just one month. So uh, big, big, big numbers there. All the stuff year over year, as you can see, uh, 70,000, now they 
next year in legends, they sold 206,000 in sales. All these people have very high net. Yes. Gross sales doesn't mean anything, but the net means a lot. So a lot of these people have very high, very high nets. We try to maintain somewhere in the upper twenties or 30% net like I did in my first year. So, so this person started the latter year of 2016, 20,000 and 171,000. And uh, when I joined Legends was uh, about right here. And you see that it's went like that. So mm. um, let's see here. we got all kinds. I just like to share real results. Uh, you know, they're not always mind boggling numbers or anything. But uh, again, 24,000 um, in this small time frame. Mm -hmm. I never surpassed that uh, in a smaller time frame in Legends. So uh, fit double in sales there. Wow. So, and same over here, same 78,000. I know this is a very, very, one of my best friends uh, now uh, because of legends, but uh, 2016, 78,000. But, uh, and it wasn't even the end of December, the December 18th, and they already did 300,000. I know they broke 300,000. Wow. Easily. So, that's a huge, that's triple, that's more than triple the sales. So, so that's, a lot of these people have financial freedom, moms and dads coming home. Mm. What is this worth to you? Well, I, to me, it'd be worth quite a bit. Um, you know, sales numbers like these with very high nets are, that's important. Anyone can sell millions of dollars on Amazon and make no money. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people can do that, but you know, it's important that we sell a lot, but also we make a good profit. So again, just real quick, blah, there's everything that's included. And that's not all of it. So <laughs> stuff. Um, there's much, much more coming your way. A lot of surprises I've not told anyone yet. So, <laughs> so, so join us. It's AMZ Legends uh, spots. We always cap it. It's uh, well, not. It'd be harder and harder again in 2018 as our, as you know, our audience is growing. Uh, we do work with um, through Jim Cockrum as well. So, you know, the audience and the attention to this group is grown, the eyeballs on it, I guess you could say. So the spots fill up a lot quicker than they used to. So, uh, so how much does it cost? Well, not near as much as you'd think. It's only $50 a week. So, and so what, less than $200 a month is what it costs. So the yeah. tools alone that sell outside of legends cost way more than that. So you get all that for 50 bucks a week. That's only 50 bucks a week. You just, don't go out to eat one time a week and you're taking that 50 bucks a week and investing in yourself and your business. And you know what, you're going to be able to cut out a ton of tools and other things you don't really need or use and just focus on legends. And uh, you're going to save yourself a lot of money because we're going to build the tools for you. If you, if it's not built now, it will be built because uh, we have a great team of developers on the back end that work for legends. And so we're going to, you're eventually not going to need uh, be like I said a one-stop shop here. So you know who's a legends group for? Don't if you're in a pinch for two hundred dollars a month. I don't want you to put yourself in a bind. So um, you know don't don't jump in here. It's not going to be like instant. You know you're going to make you know a bunch of money. You're going to have to pay attention, uh, spend some time uh, watching the videos, and then just kind of going from there. Once you get going, you will explode your growth as you've seen. And those are just a few of dozens and dozens and dozens of cases where people have doubled, tripled their sales. Mm -hmm. Anyone who wants to save money on tools, uh, you're paying for a lot of tools. When you pay a bunch for a bunch of tools individually, it can be more costly to bundle them together like we do. Um, you know, you want to be surrounded by like-minded people. That's what really helps you grow your business. Uh, always people there telling you all the time, hey, you can do it. You can do it. I'm out there doing this. Look at me. I just made this big score at uh, Tuesday morning and that motivates you. If you're going, trying to go it alone, that's can be very difficult. Anyone who wants to be grandfathered into all future perks because the price will probably be going up soon. So we've kept it at this price for a very long time. So, so you can take action again, Ryan could put in there AMZ legends. I accidentally deleted it, but I'll go back. Um, to the, go back to when we go to the questions, leave it on the page that has the has the link there. So there you go. Legends.com, guys. 
So join us and uh, you'll be happy you did. I promise I'll, I'll do my best to serve you. I'm very, very, very active in the group. This is my job. So you'll see me in there all the time. So I'm not just going to just disappear. So I don't, don't like that. I'm there all the time. So, so I'll go through and start answering some of your questions. Well done, man. Thank you so much guys. Yeah. Feel free to, feel free to post your questions here in the, in the Q and a. So Robert, uh, look at, I'll just try at the bottom. Really want to focus on proven private label. What would be complimentary to proven private label or distraction? It's only a distraction if you allow it to be Robert. That's why I tell people, um, if you go into there and you get distracted by everything, that probably means you, uh, I tell people that, that pretend this is a university and uh, you wouldn't go to an economics major and then go try to major in engineering and then jump over to biology. Yes. Uh, you just want to focus on one thing at a time mm -hmm. and we will show you how to outsource each piece of that because we have the VA's um, course where you can take VA's and find them build your confidence up to um, outsource one piece at a time. A lot of the tools we have will complement PPL for sure. The way I source all that stuff does complement PPL. So yeah, you notice that the rank chart was removed from proven Amazon course. What are we supposed to follow now? I don't understand what date I thought. Now see the top 3%, like I said, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't tell you about sales velocity because that's important. How many units a month? approximately are selling at that 3% mark. So every category is not as deep as the other category. So in books, for example, you could go out to a rank of 2 million and still get decent sales. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to go out to a rank of 2 million arts and crafts, ghost town, you'll never sell anything. So uh, for example, the top 1% in uh, video games is uh, good, but top 1% in kitchen not so good because that's going to put you out there in the millions of rank and that stuff just doesn't sell so when you just put a blanket one percent three percent on all the categories all that's telling you is how many products are in each category and what ha and where those cutoffs are it doesn't mean anything about does a product actually sell you actually go through a few different tools like junglescout.com slash estimator and look at that and 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 start punching in ranks to find out what are the sales velocity. I would like to see about on average a sale every day on the, for that ranking and then uh, use that as my uh, barometer. So, mm. so Rosemary, the things I look for in regional chains are unique items, uh, things I don't see anywhere else. A lot of the home supply stores, uh, farm, home, there's a lot of those types of stores around here. So I look for one time that I don't know why it caught my eye, but there was this um, owl decoy and I scanned it and it was like, wow, this thing is amazing. It had amazing rank. It was just an owl you put in your farm, in your garden. It's not something you would see anywhere else. It just follow your instincts. Uh, there's a lot of um, brands of food in these farm and home stores too, of candy, even coffees that uh, do really well. And they're, they're smaller brands that you won't find them in Walmarts. Uh, and they usually only sell in brick and mortar stores. So there's a lot of opportunity to be had there. So yes. And Rachel, I do, I do sell on listings with Amazon. I just try to go very shallow and that makes sure I have at least a hundred percent ROI built in. If Amazon's on the listing, then I know the the price is probably going to stay pretty rock solid. So I, I typically, um, We'll just price it maybe a cent or two below and just only have a couple in stock. So any questions in the That's chat? Amazing. You did it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, guys, if you have any other questions after this, feel free to, um, I was we're live in YouTube. Um, so you can post the comments there or just send me, um, Send me an email, Ryan at RyanRieger.com. Let's see here. Any, well, any last zingers or questions you want to throw in there? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, I hope to see you over there. I think uh, I mean, you really don't have much to lose. You try it out. If it doesn't work out for you, which I'm pretty sure it will, 
um, you know, just um, give it a shot. As you can see, the numbers are real. The people are real. There's some chatting in here right now, actually, that I, a lot of people I became good friends with. So That's Christy right. there. And uh, so, yeah, this, uh, yeah, we're, yeah, we appreciate you, Christy. So, um, you got a couple more questions real quick from Mike and uh, Christy. Hmm. So at the conferences, so we talk about, uh, for example, our conference coming up in Nashville. So we talk about print on demand is what we're going to talk about. Uh, when we have smart groups, we'll go, we'll go source. We'll go, sh you can watch me do retail arbitrage. Um, <clears throat> this time we're having by request, we're having uh, bookkeepers come and talk about, uh, you know, how to do proper bookkeeping. And uh, we're having, you know, print on demand. We're talking about sponsored ads, talking about outsourcing and uh, talking about bundling. So it covers a lot of topics, not just any one kind of like CES, how they cover a lot of topics, very actionable content. Uh, that you can uh, go. It's just pure content. And the networking parts, of course, are the most valuable parts. We had two, two, uh, the last conference, we had a mastermind group uh, with uh, uh, some people that started and that's turned into something great. They all kind of got to know each other really well at the conference and they do private label together and all kinds of things. I kind of helped them uh, with a few things here and there, but at this point they really don't they don't even need my help. They're really doing well for themselves. And I, I, I pass them a lot of uh, leads that I get, like exclusive opportunities. I just gave them one uh, for a big brand. Um, so I'm always there. I'm always adding extra value in the background that most people do not see. Yeah, we do have live streaming um, for the conferences. Um, requirements, Joe, there are no requirements for our prep center. If you're talking about minimums or anything like that, um, you have an Amazon seller account and a credit card that works. That's all you need. <laughs> so, uh, that's all that we require. Yes. The print on demand Christy will be more than t-shirts. Um, and when we are not launch initially, it will have mostly garments, but, uh, we do have like, you know, other garment type materials like aprons and then hats, even shoes will be coming. Um, and then, once we add the engraving part over the summer, that is pretty much everything. So um, mugs or shoes, you can actually engrave on shoes. That's how you make designs on shoes. So, um, so uh, hopefully I asked, answered those questions. Yeah, if Christy says she's thinking about a bunch of emotional value ideas. Yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Christy's the queen of the promotional company strategy and you know, mm -hmm. doing the print on demand. There's stuff. a really, really cool thing that uh, that'll be part of the print on demand that uh, we're in the development stages of. It's I never seen anything like it, but it you would love that, Christine. Uh, that that'll fit right into your your methods. So right, well, definitely supplement greatly what you're what you're already. Yeah, it goes right along exactly with what, what she teaches. So. so. Um, oh, Mary's asking over on YouTube, uh, plush shirts. I've never, plush. Oh, um, we do like, um, plush shirts. I'm trying to think, uh, I've never heard of that. Um, we do like, uh, I, I kind of, I think I know you're talking about the, or they have more texture to them or they're, um, they have like, uh, some, uh, I don't know, like almost looks like a, uh, soft, and they have they stand out a little bit. So oh, okay. Those, those days, I just typed in plush shirt on on Google and brought up an Amazon listing. It looks like a this looks like a very just thick flannel shirt. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, this one anyway. It, it just depends on the makeup of the shirt. So the cotton polyester content. Uh, there's just different methods to printing on those shirts. So we have all those technologies. So uh, that's definitely. Oh, okay. Good. All right, she made these teddy bear shirts, like a shirt that a teddy bear would wear, a small oh, one. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. So, um, yes, that's something we are looking into and getting blanks for. Uh, we don't have a good source for those blanks, but we are working on it. And we're also working on the infant, like onesies and things like that as well. 
So when we launch, it'll be like 30 different cuts, like uh -huh. men's and women's cuts, hoodies, uh -huh. long sleeve shirts too, things like that. But um, cool. you can even print on the inside of the shirt if you wanted to. And you'll know what yeah. I mean if you're big into merch, but there's some pretty cool stuff out there. So, wow. Yeah. So there's a, yeah. Amazon merch is, you know, the way they do is very cut and dry. So, uh, absolutely Robert, a lot of, we have a lot of Canadians in the group who use Pauline, uh, mm -hmm. our prep center in Toronto. Yep. Yeah, definitely can. And they can help you ship stuff down to our prep center. That's what you want to do. Or if you're shopping, do an online arbitrage. And it just makes sense to have it shipped directly to us. But there's a lot of products you can source on the shelf in Toronto. And you can sell profitably on .com. So. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Pauline had a whole presentation at our last conference showing yeah. you items that you could just go into your regular grocery store. And they're kind of cheap stuff to us that they don't yeah. have in Canada. She was dropping. Uh, she was buying pop tarts off the shelf in Walmart and Buffalo, New York, and driving them back home and selling them for like crazy dollars. Exactly. <laughs> Dollar amounts. It was it was it was a it was an interesting case study. It was. Oh so, my gosh. Cool. Well, Danny you did a great job, man. I appreciate it. I always enjoy this presentation. It's a. Yeah, it's fun, and it, it, I it just blows me away at everything that's in the Legends Group now from when we just started it and. Not, not even, you know, a year and a half ago, like you said, it's just great. <laughs> yeah. well, yep. Imagine what a year from now is going to be like, we're going to have the whole mm -hmm. webinar is going to be what you get and being in the group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it may have to be that or be a, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a abbreviated <laughs> list of things, I guess. Exactly. We can't tell you all. It's so cool. You just got to join. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't tell you everything. It's just too much. <laughs> yeah. So, so. Cool. Well, guys, if you want to join us, it's so, I mean, honestly, um, I know a lot of you know Danny now and he, he has a heart of gold and he really honestly is there to help. We both are. He's more active in the group than I am. I, I focus over on the private label group that I run. Um, he is really there hundred percent all the time, 24 seven to answer questions. It's not like mm -hmm. a group where he, you get in and you never hear from him ever again. He's there all the time, always yeah. providing new content, always coming up with new ideas. Um, and we are all about the reason we did this is because the testimonials, we, when we go to a conference and we have people come up to us with tears in their eyes saying, because of what you and Danny teach, my husband was able to come home. There's two stories, at least there's two that I know of in our group, um, that have had this happen where after getting into the group, their husband has been able to quit their job and work full time in their business with them. Mm -hmm. And they're just tremendously grateful that they were in the group and, um, that's what it's about for us guys. We want you to get your goals. We want you to have what you want to have. This is really like a one-stop shop for Amazon. Everything you would need to know um, can be found here. It's just an amazing, amazing support group. Uh, it can be very lonely working from home, being an Amazon seller, you family and friends don't understand what you do. Um, and you just longing to learn from people to talk to other people that's what this is. It's just, uh, it's a family. We call our conferences family reunions because it is a family yeah. um, and it's just super cool. And we'd love to, if you feel this is a fit for your business, there's no pressure here, guys. If you feel this is a, a, a fit and you want to, you want to do, you know, get in and get in, we'd love to have you and join be a part of our family. We guarantee your business will increase. If you, if you put the, the work in um, and do what, uh, what Danny and I teach, it'll, it'll work. So Thanks so much, Danny. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate your time. So, yeah. So, hopefully, I'll see you in there. We'll become friends or partners someday. So that's right. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Sorry, we went a little bit longer than normal, but uh, there's so much good stuff here. Just wanted to make sure that you walked away with some content. Um, that even if you decide not to join us, that's fine. That you walked away with some really good content that can really help your business out. And I guarantee you, you uh, you go back and watch this webinar. If you just came on, um, Danny dropped some awesome, uh, you know, some awesome value on us tonight with uh, mm -hmm. how to change your retail arbitrage business, make it more scalable. So, guys, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, we'll uh, if you have questions, feel free to to ask. We'll we'll, we'll be around. Thanks. Talk to you guys right. soon. See you guys.